Chem with Kess. Still talking about infrared spectroscopy, but now we're going to talk about the differences between an aldehyde and a ketone. So now that we're getting into our carbonyl compounds, so when we talk about carbonyls, we have different sty styles of them. So a carbonyl is the C double bonded to an oxygen. This carbonyl is going to read in a specific region, which we talked about when we introduced infrared spectroscopy. That area where carbonyls show up is going to be in area C. Area C is located between 1500 and 2000. That's the area that you can see carbonyls, alkenes, and aromatic compounds in that specific zone. So what's going to happen is there's tons of types of carbonyl compounds. You have the two that are, we're, we're discussing today in this video, aldehydes and ketones, but then you also have carboxylic acids and esters. Now, I didn't want to kind of confuse you by putting all of the looks on the board. So just tether between the two videos to really understand the differences. So we're talking about aldehyde and ketones and carboxylic, and ac carboxylic acids and esters also have this carbonyl type look. The only difference is what it's connected to over here, which I'm just going to label as the letter Z. So for aldehydes, when we have a hydrogen there, that's going to replace that to create your aldehyde. For ketones, it's locked in between two carbons. So the way that you can distinguish the differences between them, with an aldehyde, we normally see extra peaks for this hydrogen that's located in the saturated region, and it shows up sometimes as two clear separate distinct peaks away from the sp3 ch bonds and then at the 1700 mark and this is just a rough number so it's a range it could be in the 1600s up until close to very close to 1800 but normally it tends to be long and narrow in this width and almost the intensity tends to hit close to the bottom of that graph. So remember, the positionings of things make a difference. So go back to that introductory video if you're kind of tithering between um, what things look like because we have peaks that could show up here or here, but they have a completely different look from the carbonyl. So for aldehydes, we like to call these two peaks snake fangs, or at least I do. Sometimes it could be one peak, but sometimes it's a very distinguishable two peaks that you'll see right there. Now for ketones, well, ketones are locked up by two carbon groups. So here's an example of a famous ketone. Most people should know that's acetone, um, nail polish remover. So the idea is for, because these are just carbon, so this is just a carbon with a whole bunch of hydrogens connected to it, those are gonna show up in the saturated sp3, single bond CHs. The 1700 mark will have the C double bond O. Now, sometimes instructors do like you to specifically point to what you're talking about and label it as a C double bond O, that's kind of up to you or the instructor and what their preference is. Now for ketones, that's all you really have going on. You just have the carbonyl and the, car the sp3 CH bonds. So there's nothing more that's required for ketones. So these are the differences between aldehydes and ketones. And then next up, carboxylic acids and esters.